Hi everyone, this is Scrage back with another Across the Obelisk video. This is going to be a bit different. Um, we are, or I am recording this the night before the release patch. Um, so version 1.0 comes out uh, tomorrow morning. Um, and I've been playing a bit on the beta, and uh, we're currently at version 9.9, .9, and so I'm fairly sure that uh, this version will be uh, quite similar to the release version. And there's a lot of really awesome stuff coming. Um, first of all, we have uh, four new um, characters to select from. We've got Bree, Zek, Gustav, and Sylvie. Um, they are a ton of fun, and I'm really excited to do more runs with them. Um, we've also got the new perk system, um, which is super interesting, and there's gonna be a lot of sort of small details, and learning about uh, this system and uh, trying to figure out what's best for for my for the runs and uh, figure out uh, the the different perks that are going to be worth taking and where to spend your points and how much to put in certain uh like where, where to put your points and all that like there's tons of sort of thought that i'm going to be putting into that and you'll see that through my videos um coming going forward um, another thing is there's quite a few card changes. Um, there's a bunch of new art for cards. Um, and, uh, there is then a new zone, a whole new zone. So there's the frost area where a lot of these characters are unlocked and a bunch of stuff to sort of learn about that area. Um, I'm excited to continue to try out uh, some of the Frost um, builds on Evelyn, even though they did nerf quite a few of the Frost cards. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, sort of thinking about uh, this patch overall, I am super excited um, to sort of delve into it and to explore. Um, gonna do a quick rundown of my initial thoughts i've done a couple of runs um on madness 16 uh, made it part way through acts uh one and two a bunch made it to act four a couple of times like and what i think there's a lot to sort of learn and change and figure out um some of the strong things that i think uh you will that will help you in your runs. Um, one thing they changed is they buffed Orby quite a lot. Um, they changed it to a personal shield that you, the character gets to, now everyone gets this shield, and it's buffed by your shield bonuses. And uh, one thing that's really great about that is with the new talent system, if you want, so I'll show you my Otis tree. Um, you can actually get more shields than previous. I think it's two more shields than you used to be able to. I'm not exactly sure where, where it lands, but um, I think you, you can get a, a ton of bonuses to your shields. And so if you have this on Otis, it shields everyone for 13 a turn and uh, heals them for three. And uh, that's like this is all on Madness 16. If you've like watched my videos and whatnot, you know that I've basically only done Madness 16 runs. That's what I enjoy doing. I just want to try out the, the hardest runs and try to figure out uh, how to do them. So um, that's where I'm coming at with sort of all of my, what I'm, what I'm talking about today. Um, so yeah, that's one thing um, with uh, the pets. There also are a bunch of new pets. I haven't unlocked them yet, but uh, That'll be one of the first things I, I do tomorrow with the patch is uh, get these pets. I think Champy is a pretty cool one. Every two turns you um, cast a Palisade, uh, gaining a block and thorns. I think it'll be really cool on Bree or maybe Heiner or some of the other tanks. Um, Chompy is a pretty cool one. Every two turns getting a Carp. Um, and these cost of a 340-ish in the shop, so they aren't super expensive, um, and I think they could be pretty good in certain comps. Um, uh, Chumpy could also be cool if you're running something with uh, that wants to be dealing with wet charges. Um, 
We did a run where Wilbur was just doing some crazy, crazy damage with uh, lightning and whatnot. So I do think there's sort of lots of options out there for new builds and, and new stuff to come. Um, a couple of things uh, I wanted to really quick then also chat about uh, the the new characters. Um, so Bree, um, I'm, I'm going to be going through and doing individual sort of character spotlights for um, each of these characters on Madness 16 now that we're at patch 1.0. Um, I expect things to maybe slow down, your changes to slow down a bit so that these the, the videos will be good for longer. I didn't really want to do individual character spotlights when, like, the characters are going to be changing a, a decent uh, a decent amount from where they were um, before. Um, so that's something to look f uh, forward to on the channel, is I'll be um, starting on those. Um, but a quick sort of rundown of how I think these uh, characters work, especially with Madness 16, thinking about it that way. Um, Bree has some really interesting stuff going on. Um, she has, um, I think, uh, her uh, her innate talent is that at the start of combat she gains five thorns, um, which uh, there is now a talent that lets it so your your thorns no longer go away, which is pretty cool. Um, when, like when you when you're hit, and so you can actually sort of hold on to them, and she does pretty decent damage once. You, I mean, you use one of these spike shields that starts in her opening deck. And you're at like 11 thorns if you have the bonuses and, and whatnot. And so um, you you do end up sort of stacking up maybe 11, 15 thorns early on in the, in the run. And some of the enemies that are sort of weak to piercing damage can uh, take quite a bit from it. Um, and uh, I think um, one thing that will be interesting with Bree is the events especially in act one that she gets to do so she can just walk up to the moonstone and without anything else can talk to the dryad and get the moonstone for free so no requirements for your deck no nothing like that she's just a a nice uh, nice warrior who gets to then uh, chat with the dryad and and uh, the dryad appreciates it enough to just give it to her so that's one thing that you can do um, to make the Elmer fight uh, easier. Uh, the Elmer fight is still quite hard. Um, <laughs> it is still probably the hardest fight in the game. I mean, maybe there's something other ones. I haven't done a ton in Act uh, or in the new Frost Act, but uh, so Yelmer's still quite hard. And so bringing Bree along, I think, is a really good option for your tank um, to do that. Now there is one other uh, sort of event that Bree can do in Act One that's interesting. Um, she has a skill check um, for the Yelmer fight, where if you succeed on your skill check, so basically you random from your deck and get uh, if you pull a skill, then you get to remove all of the enemies from the start of the fight. So it's just Yelmer. You remove the Dryad and the um, tree trunky guy up front, and so it's just Yelmer and. Uh, I think it might be worth trying to do some builds with like a high number of skills, or you could even restart to try to find a horseshoe for Bree early on in the run. That would make it uh, quite simple because then you just automatically get that event. So um, that's really, I think, something to, to look at, and you'll probably see me do some runs like that in the future. Um, I think she's really interesting. Her sort of uh, level three talent, the big one, is plus one thorns and then gain three thorns when damaged or tactician which is the reduced skills in your uh, hand by one uh, when you at the start of your turn and so if you are doing a sort of lots of skill run lots of skills in your deck then tactician could be cool countermeasures i have found to be quite good um there's just a lot of fights where there's maybe somebody faster than you they come in and hit you a couple of times and then you start off the turn the fight with like 15 thorns or 20 thorns and um i've seen her damage numbers just sort of rack up from from doing that um we also uh, took stampede in one of our runs and uh found it to be quite nice um there's a perk um over here um in the vitality 
that uh, lets it so or makes it so that when you add vitality, it removes bleed for this specific hero. And then there's also one where it uh, increases the HP it gives by a higher amount, and uh, one that makes it, so it doesn't lose charges. So there are those are some talents that uh, I think could be quite good with uh, sort of using battle shout um, and other. Uh, vitality cards on warriors another thing to think about too is that warriors before weren't able to get an extra vitality charge uh, they now are so i think things like battle shout when you bring the vitality charge are going to be a little bit better um, stockade also the one that gives vitality that'll be pretty cool um, just giving uh, two vitality straight off instead of one is pretty nice um, one thing they did change is vitality is now reduced by the madness um setting um i can show you here so decadence um it used to just be the minus three healing done and minus 25 percent to healing received but they added the extra clause at the end this vitality heals only 50 percent of the hp gained and so vitality is a little bit worse than it was before but with the talents i think it'll it makes up for it and makes it still quite good um and so i think uh She's got a lot going for her. She has some wild, a wild talent here. This, uh, this Queen of Thorns. Um, when you would gain block charges instead of gaining block, you gain thirty percent of those charges as thorns. Um, I do not know if this is doable late game. Uh, it, it does. I mean, that would be a ton of thorns that she's creating for herself. Um, and maybe by that point, she can just take tank the hits. Um, not sure about that. Who knows? I, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's some builds where that's going to be awesome. She then just has Tireless like uh, uh, the other warriors. And uh, so I think she'll be pretty good. Her starting item isn't amazing. Um, starting with a fast, it's uh, fine. You could take a fast charge if you wanted it more. But uh, she's also pretty speedy um, compared to... Um, Heiner, at least, she's a uh, four speed faster than him. She's a little bit slower than than Gurkley, and a bit, quite a bit slower than Magnus. But uh, um, pretty fast. Her her health is higher than um, everyone but Heiner. Heiner has, still is the tankiest man. Um, her resistances are pretty decent. Doesn't have as good of slashing and piercing resist as Heiner, but um, that that's fine she does she has plenty for what she needs um early in the run she can definitely tank and you can feel pretty good about it um and uh yeah so i think she's gonna be pretty fun i'm excited to, to try her out um her skins are pretty sweet um i like this blue one a lot the sort of teal coloring is really sweet um and yeah so that's her now Let's move on to Gustav and Sylvie really quick. Um, Gustav is awesome. I, I've i been super excited about the um, scout doing songs, uh, the bard, for a long time. And uh, Minstrel really captures the bard nature of uh, scouts. And I really like how, they, how they've uh, worked with him. So... Um, they have it so that he's always in stanza. So at the start of your turn, if you don't have any stanza, gain stanza one. So you will always be at least in stanza one and sometimes higher. They also changed a little bit of how stanza works. Um, a lot of these cards like Song of Quickness and um, Sweet Melody, they used to require stanza one exactly. Um, now it's stanza one, two, or three. And so you can basically always cast Sweet Melody on Gustav because um, he's just always going to be in stanza. Because um, if he starts without it, he's going to gain it immediately. And so you can just always cast Sweet Melody. You can always cast Song of Quickness. And you can always cast Whispering Lies. And so these cards just got much better than they used to because sometimes like you would basically need to find a way to get into stanza every turn. And then like if you didn't, you were sort of you out of luck because you had this stanza one card but you didn't draw in conjunction with it a card that put you in stanza and then your sort of whole build would fall apart you had to create a very specific deck that uh, always had stanza and always had cards to benefit from it so i think it's really 
it's a really great change uh, there um, to this change. Um, and uh, for him himself, uh, compared to the other tanks, or the other scouts, I mean, he is sort of uh, tankier than Thuls, but uh, not as tanky as Sylvie or Andrin. Um, and uh, he's fairly quick. Um, along with his uh, innate trait, he then gets either heavy metal or melodic rhythm. Heavy metal, um, obviously, like if you're uh, looking for him to deal damage, I think this is a fine one to take. I do think Melodic Rhythms on Madness 16 is probably going to be better a lot of the time. Being able to heal, like, one card here heals everyone for 20% and provides a fair chunk of regen. Um, if you take the regen perk on him, which I currently don't... Ha oh, I do have. So it would be then... Um, it's going to trigger four times. You're going to give out eight regen, which regen is a little bit more valuable than it used to be. Um, healing reigns uh, sort of max out at either two or three healing um, or regen from it. And so, and they're more expensive to upgrade. And so um, you don't get sort of as, f you don't get free regen as easily as you used to. Um, so I do think this is a, a pretty cool... Um, card and it will just get better right like i have just the base version the upgraded version gives you extra regen charges and then you're healing for seven percent over the course of uh four spells so that's pretty it's i think that one's going to be quite good um the heavy metal uh, if you're if he's there if you're bringing him for damage which i do think is definitely a doable thing then that's that's cool too um fanfare Often these kind of talents, I think, are very good. Um, fanfare with uh, whenever you play a song, like three times a turn, refund one of the energy, and then gain two regen on the most damaged hero. Um, I think this is going to be the one I probably take more often. I do see Gustav as more sort of a um, support. Like, I, I, do, I feel like I'm going to be using him more as a support um than a damage dealer but we'll see that could change over time who knows um but currently i think i'll be taking the fanfare more shrill tone is awesome though plus one sharp and then sharp on heroes also increases mind damage by one per charge is really cool um we i did a run with overwork who i've done um runs with in the past and uh he had taken Shrill Tone basically to just give extra sharp to Sylvie. And uh, that was a pretty fun fun way of doing it. Um, so I think it's definitely a, a good talent and uh, could be really, really awesome. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see where that goes. I think I will definitely try out some carry sort of damage dealing Gustav in the future and see how it goes. Um, Encore, sort of similar to a lot of the other ones. If you do find really great songs, this could be cool. Ethereal weapons, um, it could be fine. I mean, uh, even when he was just sort of giving um, sharp to Sylvie, like he was racking up quite a bit of uh, sharp himself, just from heavy metal and shrill tone and, and um, other cards like that. That then um, ethereal knives could be pretty great for that that kind of thing. Um, choir is really interesting. The granting one stanza to all heroes is uh, on the first turn, and then stanza three is not removed at end of turn is really interesting. It does make it so that, I mean, stanza three just gives you three mind damage, so everyone on your team is gaining three mind damage. Um, and then also it means that uh, you, like everyone, can just always cast songs. Um, and uh, it then also makes it so that you don't get the one fatigue that comes from losing stanza three. So kind of interesting. I'm not sure how good that is. Like maybe it's cool. Maybe it's like they're probably comps where I think it'll be pretty cool. Um, but he also has wide sleeves, which uh, Thols has. And uh, Thols, when he gets wide sleeves at the end of the game, I think is an insane, insane buff. Like you basically, if you draw a single small weapon during your turn then you get two extra ones automatically because the second the one you get then spawns the third one and uh i think wide sleeves is very good so 
I, it's pretty nice that then just sort of at the end of the run, you can throw a couple of like maybe good small weapons into his deck and he can then deal a bunch of damage just with uh, the extra uh, sort of small weapons that he has uh, in his deck. So I think he's going to be really fun. Um, Jingle Bell doesn't upgrade the best. <laughs> Basically, over all the upgrades, you get a six uh, health, which is kind of meh. But uh, three, uh, or basically plus one energy every three turns. It's not the best item. You're going to replace this quite quickly, I think, a lot of the time. But while it's there, you'll you'll notice it. Um, on Madden 16, most of the runs are going to go go that far. Um, his starting card um, is uh, kind of interesting, um, and I think uh, yeah, I think. Uh, it uh, it's obviously better if he's a damage dealer, but applying madness is uh, not the worst, and uh, it'll always deal a, a chunk of damage, especially if there's some mark out there. Um, his starting deck is like pretty pretty nice. The, as I was talking about earlier, the sweet melodies, the chant of accuracies, these are pretty expensive cards, and he just starts with a bunch of them in his deck. Um, Whispering lies is also not bad. The shivs. Like aren't the best, but you can like upgrade them to add poison, and they are they're okay. Um, I think the annoying whistles are probably something I'll replace a lot of the time. Just the two two energy. I think I'm going to be using him as like an off healer, so I'll bring one healer along with the Gustav, and uh, for to help with the dispel and maybe some some healing, and uh, sort of try to deal with the run that way. Um, and so at that point, then I don't know that I want to be using my two energy on annoying whistles when it could be like a sweet melody or chance or something like that so um these i assume will get replaced a bunch but uh that's fine a lot of people have more cards in their deck that i would replace um skins i love the scald skin i like this a lot uh the bard is pretty cool too um i like these uh, the multicolor reminds me of uh wheel of time bards and their and their uh multicolored uh, uh, capes or whatever they they call them there I can't remember it's been a while since I've uh, since I've read Wheel of Time um, yeah so I think uh, I'm super excited for Gustav I think he's gonna be really fun in conjunction with characters like Sylvie Thols Gurkley um, like sort of handing them over free uh, chance of accuracy and giving sharp out is going to be really good in the early game. And then late game, I think he can do some really great stuff too. Along with, yeah, adding extra dispel to like sort of alleviate the need for multiple healers. Um, and uh, yeah, so Sylvie. Um, Sylvie's pretty cool. I like her a lot. Um, one thing I haven't really tested or noticed, it's sort of like a hidden thing almost. Not hidden, but it doesn't... It's not as feelable as other characters sort of passives. Um, she has sight on enemies, reduces their piercing resistance by 0.5 per charge. So where somebody like Gustav, it's like, okay, well, I'm just always in stanza. Cool. That's very feelable. Or like thorns. Okay. Well, I just start with five thorns. Cool. Um, Thols just, uh, has like starts with stealth. So you sort of, those are all very sort of upfront, like right there. Um, with Sylvie, it's like, oh, okay, so just sight on them reduces their piercing resistance. Um, very interesting. I think I'm excited to try some runs with, like, Sylvie and Nezglek, um, sort of working together. Sylvie will do a bunch of extra damage from the sight that Nez is putting out. Um, she can also add some sight with some of her stuff. Uh, target shooting, accurate shots, um, Hawkeye, like, all, all these are sort of sight synergies and i think it could be kind of cool to try it out so i don't know how good it's going to be who knows but it's something i'm excited to try um and then she starts with harley who harley is awesome harley is like really good one thing i didn't notice at the beginning is that uh, harley's attack is always the back monster so you're just sort of focusing down often one of the most important characters um and Harley's going, it's 4% all resist once you get it to the top level, which is really great. Um, it makes her a little bit tankier, makes it so she can stand in, in the back pretty pretty decently. Um, 
and uh, she has a lot of ways, uh, or she has some ways of gaining sharp. And uh, one of my favorite things I've done so far is ha like what I mentioned earlier, Gustav giving her extra sharp, which then makes Harley deal just uh, get the same sharp bonus that you have. And uh, um, you have some like camouflages, which is cool. Like camouflages are pretty, pretty, pretty good to start off with. These rapid fires I've found to be pretty good. I've uh, in a number of my runs just because. Like, obviously, shards and, and gold is very tight at the beginning of runs. Um, I've uh, just upgraded, like, quick shots to zero cost, and that's been pretty effective for me. Um, and so, yeah, I think Sylvie's going to be really good. Um, I think she's going to be a pretty cool damage dealer. Um, target shooting is awesome. Like, anything that adds uh, mark and uh, vulnerable and also sight to make her, like... Uh, Deal extra damage, I think, is going to be quite good. Evelyn agility, I don't think I'll take as, as much, but um, maybe could be okay. But I, I didn't think target shooting being zero cost and eventually like adding <coughs> minus 30% piercing resist, like you are going to just destroy whatever you put this on. They're going to take a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, but between accurate shots and range mastery, I feel like range mastery is going to be the one I take more often. But I could see some runs where I think uh, accurate shots could be good. Um, we'll see. I'm going to have to test it out. I, I, these are just my initial thoughts, so not sure on that. But uh, Hawkeye versus Double Shot. Uh, if you have, like, a really good ranged attack, then Double Shot's obviously decent. But Hawkeye, I think, like... Hawkeye, I am feel like could be very good. I mean, that's a lot of bleed charges to add. Um... And if you have any ways of like adding extra um, sight to people, I mean, even things like if you take accurate shots, then you're going to be adding an insane amount of uh, bleed to targets that you hit. So that's pretty cool. Um, the perforating shots, plus two sharp, awesome. Uh, your range docs ignore block <laughs> is super interesting and I think pretty good. I don't know how often it will be um it'll like matter but i think when it does it will be pretty cool so perforating shots kind of cool eternal bond gives you corrupted harley which i actually don't even know what corrupted harley does i, I maybe it hits everyone i don't actually know but uh, it'd be pretty cool uh, to, to find out um so and her starting deck is interesting i really don't know what the best thing is to do with it um i mean you could be doing something like bring her along with evelyn to do like evelyn's doing cold chill stuff and uh you use these ice shots effectively um you, the there's there's i think a lot of different ways that she can she can go and fit into to runs and uh teal version definitely the best huntress i'm excited to unlock that um and uh yeah, the perks for physical is, stuff is pretty cool. Um, these ones that I talked about earlier, you also get extra poison charges. You get some interesting stuff where poison like uh, uh, explodes at the end of the turn for extra damage, but it doesn't stack up. I think that one's probably not going to be great, but we'll see. Um, the poison reducing shadow resistance is pretty cool. I could see that being good with some priest builds doing... Um, vile gas and, and that kind of thing um and then yeah just the extra bleed charges um there's some bleed stuff with fury that i'll probably talk about when i get around to talking about uh uh Gerkley. but uh but yeah I, i'm sylvie's pretty cool um maybe the strongest new character and i'm not 100 percent sure on this but i think it is it could be um is zek um his resists are pretty decent uh got he has a ton of shadow resist, which is important because he does put a bunch of uh, darkness on himself. I've multiple times just like uh, stacked up enough darkness to blow him, blow up dark on himself twice in a fight, which like isn't ideal, but it's happened and he's lived through it. So uh, the dark resist really helps with that. Uh, along with the, he has the soul lantern that he starts with, which helps with that also. Um, so his, his passive is Pestilence. So at the start of your turn, suffer one dark and apply one dark to all enemies. This gains uh, the extra charges from 
all of your items and perks. Um, the perks now, um, ha you have uh, three extra dark charges, which is one more than before. Um, oh, this is uh, showing the stuff behind it. That's kind of weird. Okay, so this is one extra charge that he has right now. So you can have three. Um, I've had runs, we have done a number of runs with him uh, where I've had Zek and Maluka together, and like one of them takes the uh, like dark explosions deal more damage, and then the other one takes the extra dark charges. I think that works out pretty well. Um, you can have dark charges explode at the end of enemy turns. Um, we tried that out. It's like fine. I don't know. I honestly don't know which of these talents is going to be the best. Like, I think this is something I'm going to have to test out a fair amount to, like, really figure out. Um, but what I do know is that his starting deck is very good. Um, these Curse of Shadows, uh, with the three Dark Charges that you start out with, um, like, it will be, be adding seven Dark, just baseline. That is so much like towards your 25 stack that you need he starts out with two dark packs um which are also very good um same sort of thing you're playing five dark it deals a bunch of damage you start out with two dark rituals which can really help other people on your team or yourself getting extra energy starts out with the drain life which is pretty cool um deals a chunk of damage you start off with three curse of exhaustions which you can easily upgrade to the exhaust version which purges um, fast and apply slow pretty pretty nice um, you start with uh, three shadow bolts which like aren't amazing but they aren't the worst cards like you can e you can replace them pretty easily but uh, um, and not feel bad about it but they aren't like awful cards they deal a chunk of damage and, and whatnot um, and then black death is just a crazy card <laughs> so this is like uh, top level uh, deals X damage where X is your discard pile um, if you notice this deck, it doesn't really burn. Um, there's like one other card that burns. So this, that can be quite a bit, um, depending on how you build your deck. And then it, uh, bounces three more times after that, dealing extra damage each time and applying two dark each time. So, uh, this often just ends the fight. Like <laughs> it, so often I've had like two guys who are sort of halfway marked up with the uh, dark. And then you cast this, and that's an extra 10 dark on each, and a bunch of damage, and it just ends it. Um, his uh, Cursomancy, I think, is probably better than Soul Harvester. He has some stuff on this side that sort of uh, these two, which sort of deal with cold damage like and dark stuff. So it's like he stops being sort of a dark mage and is doing more cold stuff. This may work. I'm not sure. Um, but... Um, I think the Cursomancy is the one I've liked so far. Just the apply one dark to all monsters is pretty awesome because um, it, it gets the bonuses from all of your, your other dark bonuses, and, uh, and so that ends up being pretty cool. Putrefraction and Absolute Darkness are the same thing, and they're both very good. <laughs> Gaining two dark stacks uh, makes it so that his Pestilence is adding more dark, makes it all this is doing more dark, and uh, it, they, I am, it, like, the, these are crazy. Also, reducing Shatter Resist, like, it, it is, it is bonkers how much uh, dark you're going to be applying and how much damage you're going to be dealing with it, so... Um, the other one over here uh, is you heal yourself for 30% of the damage done, which eh, is, is pretty cool. Um, also gives you extra damage. Pretty, that's pretty nice. Um, dark Feast is one that I'm like way interested in. Um, at the start of your turn, for every 8 Dark you have, reduce the cost of all of the cards in your hand by 1 until discarded. Um, this is <laughs> a very interesting sort of uh, talent or trait and uh i i don't know how often i'm going to be taking it just because of how good putrefaction is but it is really interesting one thing you'll you'll notice there are some cards like this where uh the upgrade is the exact same thing except for this version you suffer dark along with it and so there are some ways to like stack up darkness on yourself pretty easily. Obviously, you're doing it with pestilence right away. Um, and there is a trait. 
um, or a perk, right, that uh, makes it so that uh, dark on this here explodes at 35. So if you like really want to go deep on this, I think you could end up stacking um, quite a bit of dark on yourself and then basically having a free hand every turn, which would be kind of cool. I'd like to see that work. So um, I, I might try something with that in the future, but I do think that in general, putrefaction is just way more reliable and way more reliably good. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to be a lot of fun to play around with. I think he's quite good. Um, he has some some pretty sweet skins. I'm excited to unlock um, the the Reaper skin. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, this patch is going to be a lot of fun. Um, sort of a lot more to explore. And I'm very excited for it. So you'll see some more runs with uh, me in the next couple of days. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the patch. Let me know in this video um, what you're most excited for. And uh, let me know who you want me to see do or who you want me to use in my upcoming runs. Um, cool. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, have a great patch day.